Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can. And this time I'll be playing Post Mortem Blind. Now, this is an adventure game that, frankly, I know nothing about. I I bought it. I bought the whole series because it's the first game in a trilogy of games. Uh, because my friend. Oh, like two years ago told me that they are cool or something but to be honest I don't really even remember what specifically was it about those games that he recommended to me but they've been sitting in my GOG library for some time now and I decided you know why not finally play them uh, I, I generally try to play and finish games that I buy because I buy them to play them uh, so yeah I, I know nothing about this game, I don't even remember why I bought it, other than the fact that it was recommended to me. Uh, now, maybe it's it has something to do with the occult, because there's like an arcane circle, and the the title, Post Mortem, means after death in Latin, so maybe, maybe, maybe it is a game about ghosts, but to be honest, you know, I, I have no idea. Mm. Now, one thing I would like to underscore before I begin the game, I am still very much a newcomer to, to the genre of, of adventure games, so do I, I do expect to maybe get stuck, and if I do, I'm going to either signify it in a description so that you can skip it, or I'm going to like speed it up if there is a larger section where no actual progress is being made, um, I just run around in a circle, you know, like a headless chicken. Uh, then I'll try to inform you about that so that you can skip that. Uh, with that being said, let's start a new game. Keep staring at each other, or are you going to invite me in? 
Okay, so it seems I had a vision of some sorts of that murder that happened with the mask, masked guy killing that couple. Now, the audio seems to be a little bit too loud, so I'll adjust it once the game lets me uh, go back to the options, because I can't for now. I'm in the middle of the dialogue, I guess. Uh, do come in. Um, I wasn't expecting anybody. Someone sent you... She didn't, didn't really even say anything about it, did she? Uh, unless she did, but I only sort of half heard it because I was consumed by that vision. That's an interesting question because it seems to not follow from what she said. She, she, the, the part that I heard of what she said was basically, are we going to stand here all day or are we go are you going to let me in she, she didn't bring up anyone who has sent her but uh someone sent you what's their name may i come in mr mcpherson what i have to say will appeal to the detective in you mm -hmm. i'm a painter not a detective well of course i will answer the call of the plot uh, otherwise it wouldn't make much sense. The game wouldn't happen. I mean, I no longer do detective work. But do come in if you want to. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I need you to investigate a case that is dear to my heart. Just name your price. Mm, I don't really have a choice in this one, so I'm not sure why does it even need me to click that. If this is literally the only thing that I can say. I haven't investigated in a long time, miss. I really need your investigative skills. I will pay all your expenses. You mentioned an interesting offer. What exactly was it? Mr. McPherson, you've been in Paris for some time and I need your help. Only you can investigate this case. I'm ready to pay anything. Oh, okay, that's not what I wanted to imply. I'm if, if she's if she's implying what I think she is, then I'm not interested. I just misunderstood. Uh, no. Could you give me any more details about the case? At the moment, it all seems rather nebulous. You probably haven't heard about the Orfe case, Mr. McPherson. The newspapers have kept it quiet. A couple of American tourists were brutally murdered. They were my sister and her husband. I want to know the circumstances surrounding their death. handling the case if they are it may well complicate things do you know the name of the inspector in charge of the investigation the detective in charge of the investigation is named Le Brun. you know the police are the same in every country mr. McPherson whether you're in New York or in Paris you mustn't be in a hurry Le Brun is no exception Not, 
not terribly interested in my fee. That's not, you know, what I'm interested in is the case. Is it interesting? Because uh, that's what the game is about. N not the amount of money I get for it or whatever, or other things, which I'm even less interested in. I don't get it. I've never worked for you before, not here nor in New York. Yet you come to me and ask me to find your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation, Mr. McPherson. I find your nickname, Spooky, to be charming. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. The suspicion surrounding you is totally unfounded, naturally. You are the man I need for this investigation. Discreet. Capable of seeing beyond appearances. Your sister and her husband, they were both American. What exactly were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. With Mr. White, her wish came true. They were so very much in love. These murders were committed in Paris. Do you know whereabouts in Paris? A hotel in a chic part of Paris in the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They arrived there about a week ago. They were found dead in their hotel bedroom. Wait, but am I, am I not in Paris? Are we not both in Paris currently? It kind of doesn't make sense to keep specifying the city if we're in the same city. Although maybe I'm supposed to take from that that we are not. But then it's kind of weird that sh she would travel to a whole different place. Well, I guess that depends on how well known a detective I am. How did they die? Are you sure they were murdered? It may just have been a terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. Mm. Okay, I... I'm not sure if I like this game's dialogue uh, system because it seems I'm railroaded into choosing all of them anyway. So why does it even matter which ones I choose and in what order? To be honest, I'm not sure I should take the case. Firstly, because where there's a murder, there's a murderer. Inspector Lebrun is in a better position to arrest murderers than I am. Mr. McPherson, I have no faith in the police. The 8th District Police Station, Lebrun especially, is trying to hush up the affair. All they care about is keeping their reputation as a chic area. Mm. Okay, this is... the dialogue system is pointless. I don't want to seem overly interested. But why don't we settle my fees before we go any further? This case may take you several days. I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of successful investigation. Your offer is very reasonable. I accept. I owe you a lot, Mr. McPherson. Much more than the money I'm paying you. You'd like me to begin right away. I think I have all the information I need to begin. You're sure you haven't forgotten anything? The police didn't find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled very comfortably. In luxury and with old family heirlooms. It was a passion they both shared. It is risky traveling with large sums of money would be a shame if they'd been killed for that reason. How valuable were these family heirlooms? An old relic of no value. My sister was very fond of it. Of no value whatsoever. I hope to have results quickly. I'll be in touch with you when I've made some progress in my investigation. Goodbye, Miss Blake. 
I ask only one thing of you. Be discreet. The police must not suspect you were involved. If you'd like to meet me... Hmm. Okay, so, so it is a first-person game. It's interesting. I, I somehow wasn't expecting that. Uh, okay, how can I access the options? Because I would like to change the audio a little bit. There's not very much variables uh, in that. I guess I have to stay with this setup. Um, okay, suspects and contacts. My client number one, Sophia Blake, uh, needs a detective to solve her sister's murder. Mm. Find a trace of the family heirloom. Uh, Regis White, one of the victims, husband of Ruby White, found dead at the Hotel 03. Okay. Uh, conversation. Okay, so I can I can go back to the previous conversations I've had, which is a very useful thing to have. I am very much glad that it happens like that. Uh, calling card, okay. Uh, what's this? Uh, okay, this is a map of Paris. Yeah, we, we are in Paris, so that's stupid. It's stupid to keep to keep reaffirming the, n the name of the city in which it happened if it is the city we're currently all in. Like, that's dumb. Nobody talks like that. Uh, okay, I guess this, this is how I use fast travel. Uh, but, but I don't want to leave my office yet. I want to explore it first. That's the calling card I received. I guess that's my wallet, which is currently probably empty. Hmm. How do I... Okay, so I can call... Hmm, send a telegram. Not yet. Uh, forgive me, miss. I seem to have misplaced the number. Thanks all the same. If you want to talk to someone, you will need their number. Glad to be of service, sir. Goodbye. Okay. I don't want to leave yet. In general, I assume there has to be something worthwhile at my office, otherwise why give me the chance to stay in it? Yes, yeah, some money, which I cannot pick up. Mm, okay, some sketches. like overwhelmingly advanced but they are still leagues better than anything I could do in real life like I can't draw for shit I uh, my artistic development as far as drawing goes uh, stopped somewhere at kindergarten level like in fact I'm pretty sure there are children in ki kindergarten that draw a lot better than I do What's even 
is that? Hmm. Okay, I'm a bit confused as to the purpose of that item. Or, or was it what it even is exactly? Okay, I guess I'm leaving. Uh, so, going to the police station is kind of risky in that I'm not supposed to let them know that I'm interested in this in this case. But maybe I can overhear something interesting. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais, you're so kind. The next time I'm at Cézanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Ah, a little bottle of red. Come on. Next. Hmm. Yeah, obviously, directly questioning the case uh, is like... It's Not so fast, buddy. If you are after the inspector, you have to see me first. It's a bit of a stupid idea, given what I've been told. Can I help you? Okay, I guess I have no choice. I have to tell them that I'm doing this. Now, this is stupid because they would have me provide credentials or whatever. Uh, and, and this is very easy to like disprove and kind of outlandish, which the, the protagonist seems to agree by the fact uh, that he hesitates trying to impersonate a member of the American government. Uh, plus, they... It wasn't stated that they were anyone important, so why would a government official even investigate them? Uh, this is not great either, because I imagine police don't really like private investigators. They, they, they must see them as, you know, amateurs, civilians, getting in the line of, of their own police work. Mm, so I think I'm going to impersonate a, a, a journalist. Mm, that that is the easiest thing to do. Although although the you are a policeman part is kind of stupid. Like what? How dumb do you have to be to I uh, even ask? You're a policeman. Um, my name is Gus McPherson. I'm an American journalist. I would like to ask you a couple of questions about the Orfe case. I do not deal with you journalist types. Okay, this is again a little outlandish. Um, now they might have a, a dic sort of a dictate not to talk to the press either. So, but but I don't think straight up telling them I'm a private detective is a good idea. As I said, I don't think cops like PIs. But they probably don't like journalists either. To be honest, now that I think about it. Because, uh, you know, police departments, they often have their own skeletons in the closet uh, that they don't really want the journalists to 
to dig up. Uh, but let's try going a little bit more in this direction. I understand. It's always intimidating to come up against a journalist. In any case, I'm not supposed to speak to the police either. Shall we make a little exception? Does your rag have a name? What? The New York the New York Times. It's the New York Times. How stupid are you? Especially because isn't it like am I not an American? It was kind of implied that I'm originally from New York when when he said I haven't worked for you uh, in uh, either here or in New York uh, and ob obviously Guy McPherson it is certainly not a French name so you know Uh, okay, this this guy is a little bit hopeless. Uh, you'd think a, a you know a detective would have better lying skills. You know, it's a newspaper in New York, the News, the New York News. I have a brother-in-law who works at the News. Do you know him, Jules Quincampoix? I think it's stupid to imply that I do know him if I don't, because that's such an easy thing to check. He, he would mention something about him, and then I wouldn't know how to respond. But this is again a little convoluted, like, I'm, I'm not a big fan of how the protagonist handles conversation. He doesn't seem very, sort of, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, he, he doesn't have doesn't seem to have his wits about him to 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 to, to like a significant degree uh, that I would think a detective would. Let's try going with this, I guess. It's not the best line, but I don't want to go with the others that straight up admit I'm a PI. I don't know who you're talking about. Are you sure he works at the news? There are dozens of daily newspapers in New York, you know. Maybe it's the Post News or the Early News. Heck, I can hardly tell them apart myself. Forget it. Hmm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road. Okay, so it was stated to me that he likes red wine, right? So if I get any, I might bribe him with it. Uh, although, that's like majorly illegal in a couple of different ways. Uh, starting with the fact, you know, disregarding the fact that bribing the police is obviously a big no-no. Uh, he's not supposed to be drinking on duty. Okay, I don't have any wine uh, as of now. Uh, just to check if. And my little gift? You do not have it? Fine then. Get lost. Mm, yeah, I guess I have to look for it. So let's go to the hotel, I guess. are heavy and do not forget young man the elevator is still out of order oh brother
Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Okay, uh, impersonating a French journalist seems like a stupid move to me. Because uh, as I said, I'm pretty sure I'm American, actually. Uh, so let's go with uh, American insurance agent. Are you the manager? My name's McPherson. I'm from the international office of WAI, Worldwide American Insurance. I'm investigating events that took place in your hotel several days ago. The murders. The insurance company. Perfect. The Whites left, shall we say, a rather substantial bill that really needs to be settled. You are here about the bill. To be honest, I was paid an advance payment, right? So, because, you know, normally I wouldn't maybe even hide the fact that I'm a PI that much, but it was specifically said to me that I should. So... The bill? Yes, that's right. I've come to settle their hotel bill. This bill is rather high. You are responsible for settling it. The total sum is exactly 2,500 francs. Mm, that's quite a lot, actually, because I've only, I've, I've only been paid 500 in advance. I know there's been a murder, but I don't know any details. How did it happen? That evening, somebody did not do their job properly. But what can I do? I cannot be everywhere at once. I shall be doubly careful from now on. Were the Whites always alone in their room? The Whites received no visitors during their stay here. They were adamant that they should not be disturbed. Which is why I refuse to give their number to a man who asked to see them the night before their murder. This man is suspicious. Have you told the police about him? Like every good citizen. Except that my memory is not what it was. I fear my description will be of no help in tracking this person. With the description you've given me? I'll be able to draw myself. I'm something of a painter, too. You are looking for a description with which you are going to produce a sketch, is that it? Well, I cannot wait to see this. The man was French, Parisian, in fact. No spectacles, no. Small, dark, rather wide eyes beneath large, thick eyebrows. Wide mouth, thin lips, a boxer's nose, solid build, a strapping lad, typical working class type. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. You again! Sir, I have nothing more to say to you. Mm. Okay, can I use the sketchbook to, to draw him? Not quite. And also, I'm kind of interested in knowing how did he... Oh, okay. So if I hover over it, it tells me the name of the, of the, of the thing. So apparently this is a camera. Can I, like, take a photo of him? Nope. Um, apparently he could tell he was from Paris by looks alone, which 
uh, you know, specifically from Paris, not even just French, uh, which I kind of press X to doubt. Um, anyway, maybe I can buy a bottle of wine for those 500 francs I've got in advance payment. What can I get you, sir? Give me a bottle of red. Mm, how much? Was, was it for free? Sir? I would like to inquire about a couple of friends. May I help you? What's the name? White. Oh, the Whites. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the Whites are dead. They were found murdered in their room. An awful story. That cannot be. The Whites? Dead? Yes. Most unfortunate. Truly awful. Can I offer you a drink? I'm fine, buddy. I don't need anything. But how did this happen? They certainly were killed. It was the lady in the room next door who alerted the reception. Do you have the name of the neighbor? She's a regular at the hotel. People say she's a little eccentric. Ask at the reception desk of the Orphée. They'll be able to tell you her name. What about the employees at the Hotel Orphée? Did you know them well? The staff at the Hotel Orphée and myself do not really hang out together. Malek comes every now and again, but other than him, no, I don't know them. Be a good guy. Tell me in detail what you saw that night. I don't know any more than that. I know that Petit, the Hotel Orphée receptionist, was chewing the fat with Inspector Lebrun. He seemed to know quite a lot about the white case. Hmm, I'm not familiar with that idiom, to chew the fat with someone. Like, I, I understand from context that it must mean something like, you know, hang out with someone, but I don't really get that. Like, what does the fat have to do with it? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anything more in this restaurant area? Hmm. You again, sir. I have nothing more to say to you. Hmm, that's interesting, because supposedly he was supposed to know more about that person who who found them. Okay, I assume that means uh, temporarily out of service mm, in French. Although it's interesting. But that's, you know, if I were to take this at face value, it means that the protagonist cannot read French. Because he doesn't comment, like he doesn't translate it in his mind or anything.
What number can I dial for you? Oh. None, actually. Uh, forgive me, miss. I seem to have misplaced the number. Thanks all the same. If you want to talk to someone, you will need their number. Glad to be of service, sir. Goodbye. You again, sir. I have nothing more to say to you. Hmm. Okay, I have the wine that I can use to bribe the policeman. So maybe let's do that. Full of promises and empty handed, huh? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. You cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty? he give me um, okay that's my that's just my wallet uh, so, so it cost uh, five francs to buy the wine a police report on the hotel or three murders um, ex extract from the autopsy report a uh, man Caucasian aged between 25 and 28 distinctive features a sailor's tattoo Woman Caucasian, aged between 23 and 25, distinct features, hair recently dyed, death was caused by decapitation in both, ca both cases, the death of the man preceded that of the woman, the broken bones in the neck suggest the use of a fine but extremely sharp blade, um, the heads were removed with a single cut, hmm, that's actually kind of impressive, like, it's actually a lot harder to chop off limbs uh, or like a head than movies would let you believe <laughs> like, like a, a pretty good uh, showcase of that is actually the scene where in game of thrones uh, theon Grager uh, tries to behead uh, Roderick cassell and he like can't do it uh, he, he needs like i know six swings with a sword and then still he has to like kick off the head like break it off uh, with a kick mm, I, I find that to be uh, s sort of a lot closer to how chopping someone's head would work uh, as a, if you're not skilled in that and if you do not have uh, you know a special um, uh, like a special dedicated tool because for example execu uh, executioner's axes they weren't um, they, they were specifically designed to chop off people's heads uh, they weren't it wasn't just like a you know it wasn't the same type of axe as like a fire axe for example uh, or uh, like a wood woodcutter's axe uh, it specifically was designed to behead people um, so that's actually kind of impressive that he managed to behead them with a single strike. Uh, es especially, you know, if the head is not braced against anything. Uh, traces of a substance, an opium derivative of unknown nature was found in the repository tracts. Uh, re or rather, respiratory tracts. Okay, so they were drugged. Uh, witness statements uh, Isidore Petit ho Hotel reception The whites returned around 11pm uh, was, ad was advised by a neighbor Mr. M Mrs. Lozier that the door uh, 507 had been left open time around midnight called the police on discovery of the bodies claims not to have touched the crime scene 
uh, two striking facts about that evening. Recalls a man wanting to see the whites the night before their death. The on-duty uh, bellboy resigned that evening. His name, Theo Malay. Uh, description of the suspect, no glasses, small dark eyes, large mouth, thin lips, boxer's nose. Uh, Mrs. Lossier, neighbor, residing in the room 506 of the hotel. Note on the lady clay note note that the lady claims to be a clairvoyant the whites returned around, around 11 11 p.m they were still in high spirits claims to have heard singing coming from the room in the hour that followed uh, as she was about to take her dog for a midnight walk she saw a man running down the stairs all she can say is that he came from the room 507 uh, noticing the door open she contacted the reception she also claims to have felt an evil emana emanating from the room. Description of the suspect, square face, short straight hair, medium sized ears. Uh, are those... Mm. Small dark eyes, thin lips, uh, square face. Okay, so, so they, are, they, they are not exclusive. In fact, they are specifically complementary. Dark eyes, dark eyes, thin lips, boxer's nose, short straight hair. Okay. Oh. Mm, Murders at the Orphe report. Uh, this contains details concerning the discovery of the two bodies by the police inspector A. Lebron. Or, or Lebron, or Lebrun, or whatever they called him. To be honest, I already forgot, so I have to, uh, you know, listen in when they speak his name again. Uh, called by Mr. Isidore Petit, uh, employed at the reception of the hotel, the police went to the room 507 of the said hotel. The two individuals, already dead on arrival of the police, were seated side by side in an upright position. Their bodies shown, uh, shown early signs of rigor mortis, but still warm, uh, were decapitated. Mm, their heads were resting in their hands. An, anci an ancient gold coin was found in each of their mouths. Uh, the victims, man and a woman, uh, reg registered under the, na the name Regis, uh, Regis and Ruby White, had reserved their room more than a month before their, tra their arrival. They had only been staying for four days. A search of the room did not reveal anything in particular other than perhaps the distinct lack of valuables. On the ground, on the ground a fine purple powder was noted. Uh, no documents were found on the scene to confirm the identification of the victims or to enable the use of uh, the use or to enable enable us to contact their next of kin. Uh, uh, theft is therefore the recorded motive. For this crime, due to the violent and unusual, unusual nature of the crime, the Associated Police Pathologist, Dr. Frank Kaufner of the Saint Pierre Hospital, was asked to draw up a psychological profile of the killer. The ancient gold coins and the purple powder were sent to forensics for analysis. The report is signed Astrid Lebron. Okay, can I get past this guy now? Not so fast, buddy. If you are after the inspector, you have to see me first. Great. Here is the pen pusher giving it another go. I've read the police report, but... I'm sure you can tell me a little more. What are your impressions on the White case? This case is pretty messy. A foul murder, unclear motive. If Inspector Lebrun needs a hand, he will ask me. For the time being, he is managing on his own like a big boy. That is all I know. When I read the file, I noticed the name of a certain doctor, Frank Kaufner. 
What can you tell me about him? Dr. Kuffner is our expert. Forensic scientist and above all, psychiatrist. The sort of guy who prefers the company of madmen and corpses to the likes of you and me. You don't seem to be overly fond of Dr. Kaufner. Is there any particular reason for that? The chief of police himself imposed Dr. Kaufner on us. It's not going to help matters any. Am I right in thinking Inspector Lebrun is in charge of the investigation on the White case? Would it be possible to meet with him? That way we can compare our information. He is not seeing anybody. Just make a statement. Okay. Goodbye. I don't have... Yeah, right. Goodbye. I don't have any super crucial information for the time being. Like, it was suggested that I might be able to draw a portrait of the guy, so maybe... Like, how do I do this? Like, you'd think I would use the sketchbook. Oh, which apparently is what I would use. Okay, so he doesn't have glasses. Uh, he has short hair. Uh, it's a so, so, sort of a, um, a square face. Uh, thick eyebrows. I don't, I don't think a mustache was mentioned. the eyebrows are they together with eyes uh, no no oh, they are together with hair okay so it has to be I think it has to be this because this is the only haircut that combines the square face with the thick eyebrows um, now, it was also mentioned... Can I change it later? I hope so. Uh, uh, short straight hair, flat medium sized ears, a square face, uh, boxer's nose, so I assume broken, uh, small dark eyes, uh, large mouth, thin lips, Okay. Okay, that is both a large mouth, uh, unless, unless that's a moustache, but I think those are very thin lips. Uh, now, Boxer's nose, he said. So, uh, that, 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 I assume, would signify that it was broken in the past. Which I think... <clears throat> Does this look broken? Oh, I, I think it, it reset anyway. So, how, how do I make it stay. I guess I, I guess I have to do this. Okay, so no glasses first of all. Uh, this is pretty reasonable as far as haircut goes because it's the only one that gives the uh, the square head impression and thick eyebrows. <laughs> Okay, I have to pause for a second, be right back. Okay, I'm back, so no beard, right? And a square jaw. Yeah, I think that would be it. 
this they said large uh, l large mouth but thin lips uh, so to be honest this I think fits best. I don't think they mentioned, they didn't mention a beard or anything. Uh, this is the squarest jaw. Mm, and this is the squarest face that also has uh, thick eyebrows. Because those eyebrows are not, uh, not as thick. Uh, and, and this face is not as square. So I think I will go with this. Because the hair is still short from the looks of it. Mm, okay, let's go with this. Mm, I wonder if I can... Uh, a picture of the suspect. I wonder, I wonder if I can make another one, if I decided uh, this is somehow wrong. Uh, Again, okay, that's good to know because there's one thing I wanted to check. If the description given to me by the receptionist, uh, is it different? Um, okay, no glasses, uh, small dark wide eyes. Thick eyebrows, wide mouth, thin lips, boxer's nose, solid build. Okay, so it does check out uh, with the other with the other description. Mm, okay. Uh, so I think I'm ready to proceed, but this episode has been long enough, so I'm going to save. And end it for now. That's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.